Praise God. Praise God. This is part two of the Easter message today. And we've gone up to Matthew chapter 28 and we've just looked at verse 5. And we've left it, we left it in the, in the last video where it said, the angel said to the women, do not be afraid for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is not here. Imagine what they must have thought. He's not here. Ooh, where is he? But where is he? He's not here. You know, when, when God, we read the scriptures, God wants us to step into the story. He wants us to be there with the women. He wants us to be having the conversation with the angel. He wants us to be able to listen to what the angel's saying. And the angel said, he's not here. He has risen. I wonder if those words actually went in. Because on their thinking, there's a dead body. Where's he gone? Where's this Jesus? And the angel said, he has risen just as he said he would. Come and see where the place where he was, where he lays. You could imagine. They went with the angel in the tomb. And there was a stone. And the tomb's empty. And another account, it says that the people went into the tomb and there was an angel sat where Jesus' body was, at the head where Jesus was. It's good to read the scriptures to get the full picture. But what are we looking at today? What does God want to say to you and me? God wants to say to you and me that there's life after coronavirus. There's life after what we're going through. There's life after lockdown. There's life after all the trauma, all the difficulties. There's life, but it's found in Jesus the life is found in Jesus. It's not here. He has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. And then he said verse 7. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And he's going to go ahead of him into Galilee. And there you will see him. Now I have told you. Now I have told you. I would think for many of us right now at this moment in time. Life has never been as tough. Life has never been so difficult. Life has never been so lonely. Life has never been so boring. Life has never been so empty. Because everything that filled our lives, our friends, our family, everything, our work, everything, it seems to be, it's just been taken away. And that's what the world can try and do to us. It can try and take everything away. It does it in many different ways. People in addiction. The world offers alcohol. The world offers drugs. The world offers pornography. And if we're not careful, even in our lockdown, we can get caught up in what the world offers. But there's a third chapter. And God offers Jesus. In John's Gospel, chapter 3, verse 3, when Jesus was having this conversation with Nicodemus, he said to him, listen, he said, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven unless you are born again. What better day to be born again than on the day that Christ rose from the dead. Christ was the firstborn from the dead. And Jesus said that if we would believe in him, we also can be with him. That the power of the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you and lives in me if we would only invite him in. What are you going to do today? Are we going to stay at chapter 2? Are we going to stay at this? this Chapter 2 of the coronavirus and, and end of, end of um, and, and the film ends with all devastation. Or are we going to go to the next chapter? How are we going to go to the next level? How are we going to go to the time where Jesus, how are we going to go and visit the tomb? Where Jesus risen from the dead in Jesus Christ. We can have life and we can have it to the full. We can have it to the full. You know our lives, they're our own. They're ours. But they're ours to do whatever we would want to do with it. Now I gave my life to Jesus some old 30 years ago, maybe. I gave my life to Jesus. And it's the best thing that I ever did. But through that time I've had so much trouble and so many difficulties. But God's taken me to amazing places in the world. God took me to India 10, 12 years ago. And when I was taken to India, I saw faith that I'd never seen before. Because people in India are so desperate, they're so poor. We went out into the villages. 
and we had meetings and we told these people about Jesus and we and we'd proclaim and we'd say, listen, Jesus, the Son of God, he died for you because people, many people worship many things and in India, many people, would, they would worship the gods, many different gods. They would worship the sun god. They would worship the moon god, the monkey god, the tree god, the buffalo god, the elephant god. They'd worship many, many different gods. And I was able to go and tell them, listen, you're worshiping gods. But is it not better to worship the God who created all these that you're worshiping? Let me tell you his name. His name is Jesus. Because the creator God sent his son. For God so loved the world that he sent his only son. Whoever would believe in him would not perish but have eternal life. And today, on this day, this day, this Easter Sunday, this Resurrection Sunday, Happy Easter, Christ has risen and Christ has risen indeed. So where do we go with this? What do we do when we're, we're stuck in our rooms in the coronavirus? We just look forward and we look ahead. We take hope from this. Because the, the women going to the tomb, they were desperate. They knew that Jesus was dead in their hearts and in their thinking they were desperate. But God, I want to tell you today, God is full of surprises. And it's when we put our faith in him and our trust in him. That we have a peace, the Bible says, from where does my help come from? He says, I lift my eyes to the hills, my help comes from the maker of heaven and earth, this God. This God who loves you and who loves me. And so today, on this Easter Sunday, he is risen. I want to speak resurrection life into you as you listen to this. Let's speak resurrection life, but well, you can do the same. You can speak resurrection life. The resurrection life of Jesus. In, uh, in Romans chapter 8, let me find Romans chapter 8. In Romans chapter 8, we read this, uh, we read these words. In Romans chapter 8, Paul was, uh, was writing this to the church. And he said this in Romans chapter 8. And he said this, reading from verse 8, he said, Those who are in the, in the flesh... In the realm of the flesh cannot speak, please God. In other words, those who are just living as this world gives, they've got to the coronavirus stage and they've nothing else. They're looking to the doctors, they're looking to the nurses, they're looking to the NHS, they're looking to all these things. But we need to lift our eyes higher to the one who created the doctors, who created the nurses, to the one who gives us life, the one who gives us breath. We should lift our eyes and look higher. Look high, let our eyes rise let our faces rise to look higher. We need to look higher. Because when we look higher, we can see him, the risen Christ. We need to look higher. And Paul's saying that, that if you continue in the flesh, you cannot please God. We cannot please God. And he wants us to know that when we're in, when we're in the realm of the flesh, it's not possible. But when we're in the realm of the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone doesn't have the Spirit of Christ, they don't belong to Christ. So you've got to invite the Spirit of Christ in. You have to invite him in. And then verse 10, listen to this, it says, But if Jesus is in you, then even though your body is subject to death, because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus up from the dead is living in you, and me, then he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal body. Because of his spirit who lives in you, Jesus says that the spirit of God lives in you. In Joel it says, in the, in the last days God will pour out his spirit on all flesh. All flesh, that's you and me. So God's poured out his spirit and his spirit is hovering. Just like in the beginning that the spirit of God hovers over the darkness of the deep. And then God said, let there be light. You know what? The Spirit of God is hovering over the whole world. And he sees the darkness of the coronavirus. But you know what? The Spirit of God said, he has risen. Let there be light. Let there be light in your life. Let there be light in my life. I want to encourage you today to somehow break free from the mortal bodies. Break free from the thinking up here. Break free from the hopelessness. That everything seems to break free from the fear of what happens. And I know what it's like to have a business. I have a business myself with no orders. It's finished now as far as I can see it. 
The government is helping me, but I've got to look forward. I have to think, well, what if the business never starts again? What if we never get any more orders? What if this and what if that? I can't live in the world of what if. I've got to live in the world of what is. And right now, today, I'm going to tell you what is. Jesus Christ. He is risen from the dead. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. I want to keep praying with me. Maybe what I can do, maybe if you, any of this has come through, if you just sense that, that wow, there is something else. And take your hand and hold your hand. It's, it's kind of saying, Father, I want to receive from you. Why don't you just do that? Open your hand like that. Father, I want to receive from you. And maybe, maybe you've never asked Jesus into your life. Maybe you have. Maybe you just want a refreshing in, in, infilling of your Holy Spirit. The Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. Sometimes we just have to fan into flame, the Bible says. Fan into flame the gift that God has given you. And the gift is the Holy Spirit. So maybe we'll pray with me. Holy Father, I thank you for the message that Jesus has risen from the dead. I confess my weakness. I confess my fear and my anxiety. I confess, oh God, that I'm lonely. I confess that I need you. Holy Father, would you fill me with your spirit right now? Lord Jesus, your hands with the nail, the nail marks that pierce them to the cross. May your hands, oh God, may they take my hand and lift me up. Oh Father, for all those watching this, they're in desperation, grief stricken. Would you lift them up? May the peace of Jesus fill your soul. May the peace of Jesus fill your life. May the power of the risen Jesus Christ live in you and in your family from this day until we finally meet him. One day we will meet the Savior of the world. Do you know him? Invite him into your life. In the name of Jesus. Amen.